All right, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming uh, through for the first press conference we are having as uh, the national unity platform after the election or something similar to that that has just happened. Um, you all know what, what is happening. Our leader, General Buchagulanyi St. Tamu Robert, is... Uh, effectively under house arrest, under illegal detention. <clears throat> a couple of us have uh, tried to go access him and um, they have stopped us from doing so. Yesterday we did see, as Honorable Zake was uh, trying to get there, he was brutally arrested, beaten up. He's uh, admitted at Rubaga Hospital. We pray and hope that he will recover because he was badly beaten and brutalized. His walking stick, his crutch was broken and, and all of that. And you, the media, you were told not to go beyond a certain point. They threatened to beat you. Um, and the rest of us, anyhow, could, could not access our leader. We have wanted to access him because he is our leader. But, but that has yet to happen. Um, of, of course, one of the things that bothers us is, uh, if, I mean, if, if you have organized an election and you're saying it's a free and fair election and you're sure you have done the right thing, then you'd have no reason to be afraid. You'd have no reason to operate the way you're operating. And here we are talking about Mr. Tiwa Habura and Tim. But as you know, the guilty run before they are chased. So it's not surprising what's happening. And uh, once again, a minority clique is forcing themselves on majority of Ugandans. That is something that we as a people are not going to accept. It is something that we are going to resist. It is something that we are going to say no to, using every avenue provided for within the law. And uh, that's the communication we are here to, to give to the nation and uh, let them know how we are going to proceed. I'm going to invite um, our deputy president in charge of uh, Central Region, Buganda Region, if you like, the Honorable Mathias Mpuga Nsamba all the way from Masaka to come and address us. You're welcome, sir. For what the duty purpose says, I'll remove the mask. Uh, thank you, Honorable Joe. I'm now and <laughs> uh, for the first time being addressed as such, MP elect Nakawa West and the spokesperson of our party. I would like to welcome everybody. And I'm here to address you on behalf of the president and on behalf of the party on the events that have taken place hours back up to today. Uh, Countrymen, the party is very thankful to Ugandans who stood with us throughout what we regard as the most treacherous campaign period this country has witnessed since independence. Uh, most of you were on the trail with uh, our president. You were aware lives were lost, women and children were maimed, several were blinded and disabled on the orders of the NRM candidate, but Ugandans remain resolute to make the statement that they love this country and that they are ready to defend the, to it to the last person, even in the face of immense adversity. We are very grateful as NUP to Ugandans who turned up in unprecedented numbers and voted for NUP candidates across the country, especially voting for our president, Honorable Chagwangi Sentam, in the face of uh, intimidation, bribery, and all man of harassment. As we speak right now, 
our president is under illegal detention at his home. We are aware that Honorable Chagrani's residence is not a gazetted detention center. The president has not been charged with any offenses in any case, for which his residence has been chosen as a remand center. Perhaps his crime was defeating Mr. Seven on the day he had elected as his crowning as an emperor, that he was really decisively defeated, and therefore it is a crime. Honorable Chagrin is not allowed to leave, receive any visitors at his home. Party members and leaders cannot meet him to dialogue on very important matters of the party and take decisions. And the family is not allowed to access groceries on their own, let alone get from friends and family outside his residence. We are aware that the military jumped over his fence and continue to litter around his compound, including using his utilities like water and power for free, without his consent. We demand for the immediate and unconditional release of our leader and the immediate declaration as a duly elected president of the republic, because we know he won. We We also demand for the immediate release of all NUP members and leaders being held in Comunicado in various detention centers across the country to enable them to return to their families or have them charged if at all they have committed any chargeable offense. As NUP, we declare all our comrades under incarceration as prisoners of conscience. Yesterday, the country listened and observed as the EC announced the final outcomes of the just concluded presidential elections. The outcomes are as curious and amazing as anyone can imagine. We shall not today delve into the minute details of the fraud and the attendant mischief related to it. Since, as a party, we are already considering numerous options as citizens and leaders to deal with this grand national shame. We are here to inform the country that NUP rejects the announced results of the presidential elections. The results announced yesterday by the EC do not in any way relate to the presidential elections in which we participated as a party. We therefore reject them and ask NUP members and all Ugandans to reject them and reject whoever purports to have won them and therefore announced by the EC. NUP is in the final stages of analyzing the data and the information related to this election fraud. We have evidence of about staffing and other forms of election malpractice. We are going to take all measures, I repeat, all measures that the law permits to challenge this fraud. We ask Ugandans who voted and trusted Honorable Chagulanyi to reject this fraud. We would like to reiterate the words of our leader Honorable Chagulanyi that this is a revolution, but not an event. And therefore, the conspiracy by Mr. Museveni and Mr. Biabakama to impose themselves on the people of Uganda shall fail. A revolution of this nature cannot be stopped by a fraudulent election. Our people should be energized with the knowledge that General Museveni was decisively defeated by the Honorable Chagulanyi. And therefore, any subsequent grandstanding by Mr. Museveni shall not deter Ugandans from demanding for his immediate exit. We would like to ask Ugandans to continue following and participating in the upcoming local government elections on 20th 
and 25th January this year because the drive and quest by Ugandans to restore the rule of law and constitutionalism shall not be a single event, as we've said before, but a series of including the local government elections coming up next week and the subsequent week in a fortnight. We request Ugandans to get out on these dates and elect NUP candidates across the country as part of the grand scheme to oust a 35-year-old dictatorship. Do not be discouraged by the presidential election fraud. The shameful fraud was meant to dispirit citizens and create a leeway for another round of fraud in the local government elections. Our quest for a free Uganda is on and remains on course despite the current attack on free speech and association. You are aware that the country is in partial darkness. The dictator switched off social media, believing that social media is a book that he took in set house. But we are able to communicate and organize ourselves in the quest to pushing the dictator in the final stages. Finally, we continue to offer our well-considered advice to the men and women in uniform to restrain themselves. Yesterday, after the purported victory by Mr. Museveni, sections of the military and the paramilitia groups went on rampage shooting all over the country. We are aware they shot and killed a number of people. We are collecting uh, information. In Chinoni town on Barara Road, they killed a mother and her little daughter in the evening around 6 o'clock. Uh, in Nyendo, in Masaka City, they shot and disabled a number of citizens. Because we are out to see NLM members celebrating. Instead we, instead, we saw the military patrolling. We didn't know that they were the ones who voted for Mr. Seven. So we are inviting men and women in uniform to reject the illegal invitation by the regime zealots to attack and undermine the quest for a free Uganda. There will be Uganda after Mr. Museveni, and there will be an army that will serve the interests of the country. So we request you not to go down with the regime. The regime on its doorway should not claim you as servants of the people of Uganda. We thank you. May God bless you. We talked about a lady, an NRM person that was uh, killed, and apparently they're saying it is by IA. And so Michael asks, what's NUP going to ensure that the community is safe? It's not our responsibility to ensure that the community is safe. As taxpayers, we pay Uganda police and uh, the men and women in uniform to ensure that we are safe. We want them to do their job. So that's a question that uh, would be best put to Uganda police force and all the attendant forces. Um, we are citizens, we too want protection. Unfortunately, the people meant to protect us are always brutalizing us, killing us. As you have seen, many of our colleagues have been killed. Hundreds of them are in jail. Many others brutalized and all of that, you know. So we, we want protection from the people that are meant to protect us. Yeah, so I, I think that's a very important point to make. Uh, that, that ultimately, people should do their job. Because, you see, houses of people get broken into, and when they call police, it takes forever to come if they ever show up. But if they hear that Honorable Chagulanyi is somewhere or any of our other colleagues, they show up, you know, dozens of them, and you're thinking, where are they when ordinary people need them to be safe? And then for us, one of the things that we promise to do when we eventually take power, because we are still on course to make sure that gets to happen, we shall run a professional police force that is there to serve the people of Uganda, that is not there to persecute people just because they oppose the existing establishment, because that's what police is used to do. They're not out there protecting lives and property. No, they're out there persecuting the opposition, persecuting anybody and everybody that opposes Mr. Museveni. That's the job that they took on. And for us, we are saying we want to get them back to playing 
they are provided for constitutional role. Joel, a follow-up there. Newt is probably the most influential community group here. <coughs> Members of the community, just a few hundred meters away, blame Newt supporters for hacking a woman to death on Thursday. And all you can say is that... You oh, there can be many accusations. I can, for example, accuse you and say, last night you raped a woman. Does that make it actually true? I think that uh, if there is any accusation, it should be followed up by whoever is meant to protect you, meant to protect that woman that I'm alleging you should have raped, you know, as opposed to say, I say, this man raped a woman and then everybody jumps on you. I, I don't think that's how countries should be run, in my view, you know. So there are professional bodies that are meant to keep people safe, that are meant to investigate, you know, when there's an alleged crime, as opposed to so somebody's making an allegation and so that makes you guilty, we should hang you. I don't think that's how our country should be run. That's why we are saying our constitutional bodies should be run professionally. That if I accuse you of an allegation like raping a woman, for example, there should be an investigation carried out as opposed to let's lynch you because I have made an allegation and that kind of thing. And that's why for us we are saying we shall make sure the police force is run professionally so that they get to do their professional job as opposed to doing politics, you know, which, which is what they are doing today. Do you have a follow-up question, sir, again? again? Ah, thank you. We, we condemn all manner of illegal acts that happen, all right, um, regardless where they happen and on who. And that's why we keep saying, can the police do their job? You know, p people are killed every day. People are being uh, taken away from their homes every night. No one knows where they're taken. Their families ask, where are you taking my person? Nobody mentions a thing. All of that is wrong, and, and it's, it's unfortunate that our country has descended to that level because there's no rule of law in this country. So anything happens, and it's business as usual. You saw our president. He went on TV, uh, and he said <laughs> he was referring to the dozens of people that were killed when people were protesting, saying, can you release Bobby Wine? And he said these ones were disturbing us, and we showed them. That's the leader of a country who does not value human life, and, and it is okay for him. Little wonder things keep happening the way they are happening. Um, Mr. Sadab Chitata asked, are we... No, maybe before that, actually, you also asked another question, uh, the state of uh, Honorable Chagulani and his wife. I don't know if it was yourself that asked about that. As we have said, our leader, Honorable Chagulani, is under illegal detention. So soldiers have surrounded his home. They have jumped into the compound. Uh, they cannot allow him and the wife to get out. They don't allow anybody to access them. Even those that usually take for them groceries, their workers, yesterday, they denied them access. We, the people that he leads, his fellow leaders in the party, try to access him so we can, I mean, the, the party is still very much alive. We need to plan and keep moving, but they denied us access to him. So he is effectively under illegal detention. And that's why for us we are saying, if Mr. Tibu Habura and those in government think that our leader has committed any offence, charge him before a court of law, as opposed to holding him illegally. Um, and like we're saying, his home is not a detention facility. It is his home. It's his private residence. So he should be able to allow whoever wants to visit him, as has always been the case. And, and we are very concerned, by the way, about um, the state in which he is and his wife. Uh, like somebody did ask, you know, uh, yes, he has uh, tweeted saying he's very concerned. So his wife going out to try and get food um, gets assaulted. These are things that are very concerning to us. Is, is his house now a barracks? Is it a prison of sorts? C can, can we get official communication about what's happening? As far as we are concerned, it's illegal detention. And we are saying it must stop. We, we actually think this is in a way inciting Ugandans. Because many of them see him as their leader. And you are illegally detaining him. And you're telling them, remain calm. How, how do you expect them to remain calm when you're treating their leader this way? So I think that Mr. Tibu Habura needs to stop inciting Ugandans. Sadab Chitada asked, are we also rejecting the MP results? I think that we have been very clear about what we are rejecting, for starters. Um, we have talked about the presidential election results. And the reason is very simple. So for those of us that have been elected members of parliament, we each have our declaration of results forms from each of our polling stations. And it's on that basis that we were declared winners. We are saying 
Mr. Biabakama kept reading results from a certain computer. Even you don't know where he was getting those results from. Where are they coming from? Because the buck stops with the declaration of results forms that are coming from every polling session. So for us, we are saying we won. So, so like I'm saying, um, we were declared winners, a number of us as the members of parliament, because there is evidence to show that we won. There's declaration of results forms from every polling session clearly showing that we won. And um, by the way, there are certain MP positions where there's contestations as far as we are concerned. And the reason, again, that is the case is because the declaration of results forms are either not available or have been tampered with. So ultimately, it gets back to that. So yes, a number of us are celebrating, but there's a number of our colleagues where we are still contesting uh, the wins, quote unquote, of our opponents because there's no clarity. The DR forms are not as available as should be or have been tampered with. So that's why we are saying we have issues with uh, the results for the president that were announced by Mr. Biabakama. Where is he getting them from? Where are the declaration of results forms? And as uh, my colleague, the SG, will be letting you know, many of our colleagues, you know, who have been bringing our declaration of results forms have been arrested and these DR forms have been taken away. Clearly, they are trying to cover up for, for their shame, for their thuggery, because um, why are you afraid of evidence if you say that you have won? One last question, because there are a number of them. One last that I will address and then I'll invite my colleagues. Um, there was a question. What's our message to the young people that voted for us overwhelmingly? And it's not just young people that voted. Come again. Because you said many of your colleagues who are coming in the DR forms have been arrested and the forms taken away. Mm. And I heard the deputy president say... The principal and I will cut this short immediately and go to the photo because there's that situation in the Pagodon Jewelry. We, the set of DR forms that we have, you know that each candidate is entitled to DR forms? As an MP candidate. Say the agents mm. uh, who are bringing DR forms from the presidential elections mm. were arrested. Mm. So you're asking whether they have, we have a different set of DR forms. Let me help you, my brother. Anybody that is in any race, whether MP or president, you are entitled to DR forms. So I have my DR forms from every polling station in Nakawa West. And so a presidential candidate is entitled. They are given to their agents, each one of them. And those are the ones that we are talking about. And by the way, as we speak now, I've just been informed by the SG, um, one of our agents that had you know, just uh, gotten DR forms from a couple of places that was um, arrested last night. Police has now raided their home in Bokoto. And uh, we shall employ you after here. We'll be heading there to establish what's going on. So they are raiding places where they think these DR forms are being held. Clearly, they have a lot to hide because these are our DR forms. We are entitled to them. They were given to us by the Electoral Commission. Why are you stealing them? You're clearly stealing them so that you can try and match them with the ones that you have, which you have cooked up, which you have concocted. That's what is happening currently. And, and uh, we, we think that it's very problematic and we cannot just sit by and assume that everything is all right. Lastly, there was a question about the message for young people and other people that have voted for us. Our message to Ugandans is a very clear one. We are still on course to see that there gets to be change of leadership in this our country. So yes, uh, there are people who are saying, as NUP, now you have majority opposition MPs in parliament, that should be a good thing. You're going to get the lead of opposition in parliament, that should be a good thing. Look, we didn't set out on this journey to become the biggest opposition party in Uganda. We didn't set out on this journey to get the leader of opposition in, party, in parliament. We set out on this journey to see change of leadership in this, our country. That goal has not been achieved yet. And so we'll keep pursuing this goal. We'll keep pressing on every step of the way until we achieve that. 
I'll say this very quickly in Uganda and then invite my colleagues. Um, Sorry, just a second. Hello? Just in case. That the world in general makes a lot of sense to see what's going on. Daily. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid we, we we are really pushed to first put this on hold. We want to run to, and I will employ you to follow us. Uh, Mm. But in the constitution to keep pursuing the change of leadership that we want. And the means are all available in the constitution. What does that mean? Is that a call to go to the streets? Let's be specific. It's a call for us as Ugandans to follow every constitutionally provided for avenue to pursue change. I think that's very clear. So you will pardon us, we now want to run to this place uh, where our colleagues have been raided to pick the DR forms and all of that. So I'll, I'll employ our leaders. Uh, Azizia <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>